This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning provides world-class service from beginning to end of your training journey and beyond. Fortify your expertise with access to self-paced IT training videos, interactive practice labs, and certification practice tests. Individuals use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. Okay, so last week I mentioned the recent release of a WinRAR 6.23. And I noted then that it fixed a pair of critical vulnerabilities that could have been used to execute code on its users' systems. Well, then came the news that this pair of vulnerabilities had been discovered by bad guys and had been actively exploited at least as far back as last April. Uh, maybe sooner, and that wasn't seen. Bleeping Computer's headline last Wednesday, after last Tuesday's podcast, was WinRAR Zero Days Exploited Since April to Hack Trading Accounts. And since this really forms a cautionary tale, uh, which might catch any of us if we were to even briefly drop our guard, I want to share some of the details which Bleeping Computer shared from Group IB, who were the ones who made the original discovery. I've edited what Bleeping Computer wrote a bit for the podcast, but basically what they said was, a WinRAR zero-day vulnerability tracked as CVE 2023-38831 was actively exploited to install malware when clicking on harmless files in an archive, allowing the hackers to breach online cryptocurrency trading accounts. The vulnerability has been under active exploitation since April of 2023, being used to distribute various malware families, including DarkMe, Guloader, and the, the Remcos, R-E-M-C-O-S, RAT, Revert uh, Remote Access Trojan. And really, that's got to be one of the best abbreviations, or I, I guess acronyms we've seen in a long time, calling it a RAT, which is, you know, <laughs> is perfect for Remote Access Trojan. Anyway, the, the WinRAR zero-day vulnerability, they said, allowed the threat actors to create malicious .rar and .zip archives containing innocuous files such as JPEG images, text files, and PDF docs. However, when a user opens a file, the flaw will cause a script to be executed that installs malware on the device. Bleeping Computer tested a malicious archive shared by Group IB who discovered the campaign, and simply double-clicking on a PDF caused a, caused a command script to be executed to install malware. The zero day was fixed in WinRAR version 6.23, released on August 2nd, which also resolved several other security issues, including this flaw that can trigger command execution upon opening a specially crafted RAR file. In a report released last Wednesday, researchers from Group IB said they discovered the WinRAR zero day being used to target cryptocurrency and stock trading forums where the hackers pretended to be other enthusiasts sharing their trading strategies. Their forum posts contain links to specially crafted WinRAR zip or RAR archives that pretended to include the shared trading strategy consisting of PDFs text files, and images. The fact that those archives uh, target traders is demonstrated by the forum posting the post titles like Best Personal Strategy to Trade with Bitcoin. The malicious archives were distributed on at least eight public trading forums, infecting at least co a confirmed 130 traders' devices. The total number of victims and financial losses resulting from the campaign are unknown. Anyway, so essentially there was a there was a, 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 a file that you that was innocent, innocuous, and a folder of the same name. And when you open the file for reasons of this bug, which had been figured out by bad guys, a, a command script in the folder was executed and would cause malware to be installed on this victim uh, machine. That explains it because, you know, 
we talk a lot about, you know, PDF, for instance, because it's an interpreter, you it's really writing it's code, and you're and and the PDF right. is actually co code, and then the PDF reader is a, an interpreter interpreting the code. But and it's been a long time since I wrote. Uh, I I wrote a long time ago an ARC decoder, but I remember it was mostly lookup tables. It wasn't really doing interpretation. So this makes sense. It's not that the RAR file format is being interpreted. It's that you're including something hidden in the folder that then gets executed. Yeah, and so the, the, exactly, it, it was the it was the thing in the folder that got executed, and that was unseen. That there, and there was a bug in RAR that allowed a specially crafted archive to cause the the folder's contents to be executed. Yeah. And then, and then what it did, do you, even though you were clicking on the PDF, it didn't actually launch, it didn't open and launch the PDF. So the script did that so that the user thought that what they, that, that their action was actually successful, even though it was a script that ran that action for them it's in an, order to hide the fact that of, of what it was doing in the background. It's an unusually nice finesse because usually they don't care. Just, right. They go, oh, They've already work. got you by they that point. They got you. Yeah, right. That's yeah. Nice. Although they're wanting to get in there and then, uh, and you know, in order to suck someone's cryptocurrency trading out. So right. they probably do want to be on the DL in order to they get that done. They don't want to make you suspicious. Yeah. Well, okay, that makes a so, lot of sense to me. I was wondering if Winmar had some sort of weird interpreter built in, but no. Okay. So, okay. Think about this. WinRAR has been around forever. It's a trusted and robust archiving utility. Um, I use it myself because it's highly configurable, much more so than, than zip, for example. And when configured to use large compression block sizes and to generate a so-called solid archive, which is one that's not easily editable after the fact, it could achieve unmatched compression levels. So naturally it's my choice. So I'm trying to imagine what would happen if someone who appeared to be trustworthy were to post a link to a dot rar archive in a public forum you know i guess my first thought would be to wonder why it wasn't a zip since that would be more common but i might assume that the guy was more techy and you know knew about archiving since rar does outperform zip um i would hope that i would have the presence of mind to drop anything like that first into virus total for its quick analysis and evaluation. And I'll just note for everyone here that it's possible to avoid even downloading a suspicious file first, since virus total can be given a link to download and obtain and then analyze a file without us first needing to do so. Oh, that's nice. So I like that. That's an, Yes, so you're able to just like like right click on the link in the forum, copy the URL, go over to Virus Total, and then and then and then copy that URL into Virus Total. It will download it and performance analysis, and presumably it would have exploded in red alerts and you know what, everything. What, do we know that it would have dis discovered it? I mean. Uh, you know, it, it's able to open all of these archives and and self decompressing so files. See, and it other. would see the malicious e yeah. exe. Yeah, it, it would have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would have absolutely seen the, this remote access Trojan and gone. You know, warning, Will Robinson. Anyway, so um, in any event, I, I could imagine that I might open the RAR file since I trust WinRAR. You know, and that's really the crux of it, right? In this instance, my years-long trust of a WinRAR would have been misplaced. And if my guard was down, I might have been bitten. So I'm not sure what lesson we take away from this. You know, never trust nothing and live in a cave isn't a practical strategy. But, but being unfailingly skeptical of anything being offered over the internet by someone who you don't actually know probably is a practical strategy. And, and, and in fact, it's increasingly a survival strategy on the internet. And, and this points to the other mistake those victims made. They didn't really know the person who was offering the download. 
You know, I mean, it was just someone, and that's the whole idea, right? They wanted what the guy was offering. You know, they couldn't have really known them, or they would have never don't downloaded the file being offered, or or at least they 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 couldn't have had the requirement of really knowing them, or they wouldn't have downloaded the file. They're you know you know the that old adage of never taking candy from a stranger. You know, it turns out to be as useful for adults as well as it is for children. And here, some guy who they didn't really know was saying, hey, here's my strategy, and boy, I'm getting rich on Bitcoin. So check this out. So anyway, I suppose our takeaway is just to refresh our healthy skepticism of the Internet and, you know, to remember to try to never drop our guard. All it takes, as we've often said, is one mistake to ruin our whole day. So anyway, I, I, as it happens, I, I mentioned this update to WinRAR last week because I'm a WinRAR user and there were two exploitable zero days. <clears throat> and then it turns out, yep, not only were they exploitable, but they had been actively exploited and were biting people. So for what it's worth, you heard me mention that if you're also a WinRAR user, eh, I would increase the priority of updating your copy to 6.23. Does because, it? Uh, it's such to, an old program. Does it actually? It's modern, but it's old. Does it automatically look for updates and update itself? Or I bet it doesn't. No, no, <laughs> no. Okay. And in fact, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because <laughs> the, when, when I saw that, I opened my copy of WinRAR and went poking around. You know, the help and about and all that. No opportunity to update itself. It there is a it there is a click to open the website. Yeah, and that takes you then. It's on you, to, man. It's on you. Yeah, <laughs> check check the version number. Man. And and you know, uh, there is a vulnerability. Uh, the 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 opposite example of WinRAR is Notepad plus plus, and boy. I don't know what the author of that is doing, but apparently he has too much free time. Oh, a lot of because, <laughs> oh my God, it every time I use it, it's like, oh, there's a new version. It's like, no shit. Of course, my, there my is. My Xbox it's does been, that. It's been an hour. I only play a game once every few weeks, and uh, every, invariably they'll say, "Well, I have to download a 14 gigabyte file to do that." <laughs> it's like, no, I don't. Please. Thank yeah. You. Now the good news is Notepad plus plus is elegant about updating. It'll it'll say I have to close Notepad in order to update. It's like ah oh, okay fine. So it closes it and then it updates it and then it says you want to reopen it. It's like yes and it you know and Notepad plus plus does reopen the things that it last had okay. open. So okay. it's not bad. But the point is, the more you do these little incremental updates, the more opportunity there is to make a mistake. True and. You know, if somebody were to infect his server and get yes. a bad version in there, you mean a, the whole world would suddenly have it. Yeah, man in the middle attack, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I. But this is why I like Linux and I like the package manager idea, which is that you, if you install everything with the package manager, it, all you have to do is periodically run your package manager and it will update everything that it's installed. That's a very yep. nice. Uh, Windows is. Sp slowly moving in that direction with Winget, but that's the way to do it, I think. Yep.